Okay, for popping sheep horns. So when the sheep horns <coughs> basically um, are coming into the shop, what I do, I cut them roughly to the right angle that I think, and I'm always wrong with them because it's pretty hard to cut from this ang angle. Like, I mean, put your saws all in here. It's a challenging thing. Anyway, I just cut it smaller so the whole majority of the skull is gone. Get it to this point, and of course, you know, I clean up uh, the brain cavity and the eyes and everything. And then from inside the eye socket here, I put a couple of holes. I drill out a couple of holes in each side. And then what I'll do, I'll soak the, uh, soak the whole thing, like in water. Uh, you, you can see that this is all wet. Soak it for a couple of days, two, three days. And then change the water so it doesn't get smelly. And then after that, I bring them out. So it's kind of like, you know, all, everything is fresh and loosened up and um, whatever I can get my hands on any kind of tools I bring them to pop them open so let's do one so we can <coughs> compare how it is comparing to not to because some people they just leave them like this to dry over six months or a year or something it looks like it's good but it really gets a lot of bugs inside of it in the shop and uh, it can't really get smelly. It's not good. And then by the way, I have, I have had mounts that people brought them in, sheep mounts that they were done like 20 years ago without cleaning the inside. And guess what? With the first tap on the horn, the horn popped off. Uh, it was not even glued or anything. The guy just let it there to sit and dry. So it's quite scary that, you know, some people leave them like that. But anyway, here's how you're going to pop them open. A couple of screwdriver and a couple of different angles. is going to put some pressure underneath it. You can see that you can easily separate the horn. It just comes off like a thick skin. Put some pressure from that side. That's all it takes. So you can <clears throat> peel off the skin. Let me just get it closer for you. Hopefully I can keep it in the frame while you're watching. <clears throat> so you want to start from the back here, push your screwdriver right, separate the dark skin from the membrane that you can see in front of it. It comes off fairly easy. And then you put the pressure from behind in here and keep it in there so the tension, the tension doesn't stop. And then you push your tip of your screwdriver into the front. You can see it's trying to so already separating so.
There you go. So inside you can see so much blood veins and even a, a thin layer of skin and thick membrane all over the here, all over the place. And looking inside, it's just gross and very, very bloody. So what I like to do, I like to take, uh, let me just zoom out here again. So I like to take the horns off into the sink, wash the inside of it thoroughly, and clean out as much as I can with wire brush and everything, and then dry it out with borax and set it aside. And uh, uh, I will cut this from here to just reduce some weight, and then for popping them back in. One thing I forgot to mention, um, before we do any of this, when the horns are still like that, when the horns were there, I made a couple of pinholes or pilot holes in here with a small drill. Okay, there is one in here, one in here. So by the time I'm ready to put them back on, I have a guide knee in here, so I'm not pushing them in too far or leaving them out too far. Okay, so... That's what it's all about. And then as soon as I cut these in half, I can freely throw this into my pot and boil the life out of it. And everything will come out clean, 100%, and then we'll bondo the rest of it. I'll try to keep in mind to continue the video on the second part as well, so you can see what I'm talking about. So what we've done so far here, we've uh, basically cut the sheath of the, the, sorry, the core of the horns a little bit shorter, just to reduce a little bit of weight. And it also fits inside the horns a little bit better when we have them shorter after shrinkage. And also, it's, it's been hard boiled and all taken care of, all clean. And also what I do, I pour a bunch of borax inside of the horns and after washing and cleaning everything and let it sit there. Basically, I, I put a handful of borax inside each horn and move it like that around so the borax gets to all corners and all the spot in, inside the horns. And once it's like this, I just uh, set them aside till it air dries and preserve everything, dries everything. And now it's time to put them together. So I just want to take care of all the loose borax. At least for the first five inches or four inches, this much. Clean inside the horns. Because uh, just makes it easier to glue everything together once it's all free of dust and debris. And you can dump it out. Okay, so both horns are ready to go. In the back of the horns, if you remember, we made some pilot holes, which we're going to test right now. So put one horn back on its core and see where our hole was here. So this was my hole in here. I pushed that nail in there. I'm gonna pull it out so you can see right here. That's our pilot hole. That allows us to 
set in the horn with a little bit of a wiggle, we don't want to misalign it. So that pilot hole is going to help us put it exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay, so the other one. This is gonna work just fine too. Okay. Mix our bondo and come back. So I'm using automotive bondo. You can easily find them in any automotive uh, store or supplier. Just transfer some, about I would say, hmm, that would be tough. I'm gonna show you instead of trying to guess the weight. We don't need much because this is only for securing the horns uh, over the sh uh, over the core, and then we're gonna use some foam afterward as well. So this is all I'm using, as you can see. You know, it's not much, but what I do, I mix it with. This is the hardener cream. I also mix it with some paper pulp to give it more strength. Make sure you mix it really well so the color of the Bondo after mixing it with that blue hardener cream is quite even. And then put some paper pulp in there. Of course it's going to add a little bit to, to the amount that we have. but it also is going to make it a lot um, harder to basically, or basic, it takes, um, makes it a little bit easier to work with. I mean, you can easily scoop it up and put it on the horns. And a couple of spots on the horn, on the, inside core, one in the front, one in the back. As I say, no, you don't need a lot. Okay. And then push it right inside and right away look for your pilot hole. Once you're, you can put your pin inside easily that's good news. It means that your horn is being placed in the right place. You don't need to worry about it being 100% or not. It is going to be good. I keep moving it around till I find my hole and the pin will go in freely. There you go. While it's still soft, you can push it in all the way. 
let it sit just like that till it sets. Okay, it's been a few minutes already and I'm checking it all around. Some of the Bondo I can see that it's squeezed out so it's almost 75% set. So actually it kind of like gels up at this time. And this is a great time to come and cut out the excess if it has gelled out and is squeezing out of here. So you can cut them all off easy. Otherwise it's just gonna get too hard. Okay, it's clean. And we'll leave it here to set completely before we come in for finishing it off. Okay, the fiberglass or Bondo is completely set. And I'm going to mix some urethane foam, polyurethane foam. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. I used to use some plaster, plaster Paris, to uh, basically work into the gaps in here, but I found it it's much simpler and better job if I pour some foam in there. Slowly pour into the gap and I'm not worried about overflow. It'll clean up very easy. Of course once it's all set. The back we don't have much of a gap, but I still pour some in there. Oops. A little more in the front. And just let it rise up to its maximum level, and then we'll come back and clean it after. We might have to do a little bit more if it doesn't rise the same direction that we want it. So I can already see that some areas didn't rise up properly just because of the angle of the horns sitting on the table and the gravity, but it doesn't matter. We'll just mix up some more and and then pour it exactly where we want it. I think this time it's going to raise properly. Or at least in the intended direction. Alright, so the foam has totally set and all we have to do is just carve out around the base and clean it all out.
so it's all ready to go. The horns are fully secured in and ready to mount.